our countdown uh our countdown worked um like you said i think our podcast worked out great all the surprises coming in um after we were announced and then the roster just uh stood up and showed out and um for the new eyes that came on it i think that we we hooked some viewers so i think it's very cool so it was you exciting know, man yeah if yeah, the last time no, I talked yeah, to you guys, but, which was Royal Rumble last year, you, you wanted to go to AEW. There was talk of this. You guys were close. You guys were very close. So, yeah. so why not AEW this time around? Well, September of 2019, uh, we had been talking and talking and talking to them. Uh, there was a very, very, very generous offer on the table. And then... You know, WWE does what WWE sometimes does, and they backed the bank truck up to the house and gave us a guarantee that was, uh, I guess, too nice at the time for us to pass on, knowing that it wasn't the right decision. But um, now I can honestly say that everything does happen for a reason because we're happy with with how things turned out. But it sucked that we um, we were that close to leaving and we didn't and we didn't bet on ourselves and we, we stuck around and we took their money and uh, we saw what happened when the, when the pandemic occurred. And, you know, I think that when certain people who we've already spoke on, we don't need to go back over it again are trying to save, you know, five or six talent that maybe their money adds up to the two of us. Uh, we got put on a list we might not have originally been on and, Hey, it is what it is. But now here we are. Slammiversary was a smashing success. The TV tapings were great. And we're headed to talk and shop a mania. Well, I think quickly, I, I think Chris was asking if why we didn't go to AEW now. Oh, I was just giving a political right. answer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, honestly, I don't know how, how I don't know if AEW is like throwing out any kind of offers right now in the middle of this global pandemic. And like, you know, we're friends with the Bucks, we're friends with Chris Jericho, we're friends with Kenny Omega now. And we've spoke with them a lot. Um, but honestly, nothing ever came up, you know, and and Scott Demore hit us up the day we got released. And he's been very, 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 very open with the fact that he wanted they wanted to bring us to impact. And they had an, an offer for us within, you know, couple of days after of, of getting released and it was and it i wasn't dying to go back and wrestle again because wwe kind of sucked some shit away from my brain of even wanting to wrestle and like he 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 pushed it really hard and he, and he made he made it something that we wanted to do and so it impact literally courted us so well that we were that's where we chose to go and we were in it's it turned out it turned out fun great well, you guys talked on your podcast, Talk and Shop, about how you never thought that your name would be on this list. I mean, you're coming off of WrestleMania, you guys were part of the Boneyard match. You thought that when there were going to be releases, there was no way, especially after you guys signed your deal, that you would be released. No chance. I would have bet my house on it. Good thing I would I, 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 I was. I had my. I don't know about my house. There's a big ass house, man. I don't. Yes, I don't at, 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 at that time, <laughs> I mean, well, okay, maybe not. Like when I saw the Vince video, right, of him saying we had to lay some people off, be some furloughs, and like, my first thought was like, what the fuck's a furlough? And I, so I looked it up real quick, and I googled furlough. I was like, furlough, lay him off for a little bit, and then come back. I was like, hmm. Well, there's no. I mean, no. Nah. And I went downstairs, and I, I was holding my baby, and I said, Ma or Teeny, like my, my wife. I go, Hey. I, Vince just put out this video about maybe laying some people off, but I'm not going to lie. Like I feel confident. I feel confident. You know, I remember that. I remember that day and I remember the video and it was downstairs in the gym working out. And then I went and sat in the sauna and we were texting with a few of our buddies in a separate text group. And they were going, Oh man, I'm really worried. I saw the video. I saw the video. And we were like consoling them. Like, you know, uh, Hey, wrestling you know you know this pandemic's gonna be over there'll be plenty of places for you guys to go oh here was a good Not one thinking we're gonna be on the fucking list we're just telling a really them good the brothers are gonna be fine you know there's, there's a hawkins. lot of options now and well, then hawkins. we get fucking called <laughs> well hawkins tells us he got he, hawkins goes hawkins got fired brother he caught he talked to third person you know, they, <laughs> they, get, they got the hawkins and we were like damn you know i'm sorry hawkins exactly. but like i mean yeah. you know you haven't been on tv in a while i probably saw it coming right i mean we're thinking that's what you're thinking poor guy like fuck yeah. but you're gonna be okay then I look down, I see Carano, Carano ringing my phone. I went, nah, hold on. Is the, what the fuck? Then I talked to him, right? And then he, he says, like, fuck it, business, man. It's all good. And Gallo sees the call. He answers it and goes, and what did what Carano say? I just got the phone with your partner. And Gallo goes, 
for so what? For what? <laughs> he, did, goes, bro, he, didn't even, he just stuck he, right I got on. Some bad news, and I go, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Us? And he goes, "I'm sorry, buddy." And I went, "What the fuck?" Hey. And then I, I just, I know how how hard and shitty that job can be. So I wasn't even mad at him. I just wanted to hang up. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. you know, us being us, uh, I knew that. Carl did not see it coming that Chad did not see it coming. So I went straight into Carney brother mode and called and got us booked in Peru and Spain because we thought the world would be open by now. We were just going to be doing a world tour. <laughs> he said, Don't worry, brother. We're going to Peru and Spain for signings. I got this amount of money and I'm also going to run a pay-per-view in my backyard. You can be involved in that or you're not. We're either one. I don't care. I'm running the pay-per-view. And I go, what are you talking about? What, what are you talking let, about? Let this wrap around Why? my head real quick, please. I just got canned. Yeah. Well, and then I got a, I got a text from Big E. I don't think I even said this ever. I saw a text from Big E. Like, I remember I was up in my room, like just going, "What the fuck just happened?" And then Big E wrote, "I'm so sorry, Chad. Like, you know, I, good luck, bro. I love you." And I was like, "How does he know?" You know. And then I realized that they they put it on their website. I just did. I go, "Oh no, the whole world knows." So then I go outside and like, <laughs> I'm working out outside, just trying to get my head right. I'm thinking the neighbors are looking at me like I'm a like I'm a jobless asshole. Everyone <laughs> thinks I'm a loser. Oh, this is terrible. And I was so pissed. Why the fuck would they put it on their website, man? Why do they got to make it like that? You know. And then I realized, I, 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 I realized you're a celebrity. That's what happens. That's how I made it feel that way. So the first move after after the call, after finding out you released, is picking the pieces up and trying to figure out where you can get booked immediately. Oh yeah, I'm not. I don't believe in a rearview mirror at all. And I've been through this before, and I, I wasn't worried at all. I know that we have you know, a big following. We have good buzz. People would want to see us. And then it was just like, well, how do we capitalize on this negative, turn it into a positive? And uh, I went to work right away. I've been busy in the last three months than I've ever been in my life because of all the side business stuff with putting out the beer, with the podcast, with putting together this ridiculous pay-per-view that we're going to run. Um, and then, you know, the overseas bookings and negotiating with impact and, and getting, you know, them being very accommodating, putting all the stuff into that deal that we wanted so we'd be able to eventually return to New Japan when the world's open and, you know, lots of other stuff like that. And it's just, uh, I felt like I had a real job for the first time ever because I'm on Zoom calls and I'm yeah. working the phone and I'm talking to these business guys and I'm pitching TV shows and all this shit that we've never really done before. But I mean, why the hell not? And it's all, uh, it's all working out really well so yeah, because we thought the hustle side yeah. we, you know we, we hustled when we were with the bullet club selling bullet club shirts and taking our you know and we made as much money as we possibly could because we have families and that's all like, you, you got to just try to make as much as you can right sure. and so like when you when you sign with wwe you're just like well i mean let's just here we go let's just collect the check sure. do what we can and like five years of just waving that wwe flag and, and not having to go out and do these side hustles well, yeah, as soon as we got that release, man, Gallows was on it, bro. I mean, I always missed the hustle. I had a secret it, wrestling promotion that I owned the whole time I was in WWE. I just lied about it. <laughs> yeah, it just like it just I, I I don't always love the hustle. I, I like that nice little paycheck coming in and just relaxing and, and just like, yeah, but don't you like all that nice extra brother money that I send your way? 100 percent. I, I'm a brother, man. So I like to it's been fun. It's just been, you know, trying to get back into the hustle mode again. And I mean, we're fully back in now. 